Happy Mother's Day, Sarah. After waiting to have a child for so many years, you must be overjoyed to have Isaac. Today is about you and all those who are still waiting. Happy Mother's Day, midwives of Israel. You risk your own safety to ensure the survival of countless children. Today is about you and all those who care for children and call it work. Happy Mother's Day, daughter of Pharaoh. By welcoming Moses into your family, you showed so much love. Today is about you and all foster and adoptive parents. Happy Mother's Day, Naomi. You walked with Ruth as a friend and cared for a child as your own grandchild. Today is about you and all grandmothers and extended family who care for children. Happy Mother's Day, Hannah. You let go of Samuel, even though it hurt you. Today is about you and all those whose children are not living with them right now. Happy Mother's Day, Anna. Life didn't go as you had hoped, yet you found peace and worth in your service to God. Today is about you and all those experiencing heartache at how things have turned out. Happy Mother's Day, Lois and Eunice. Your faith changed Timothy's life. Today is about all those who are playing a part in raising the next generation. Mother's Day is about you, whatever your role might be. Good morning. I'm Hannah. Um, it's nice to see you all this morning. I wanted to say, first of all, if you're here and you've got children, well done. <laughs> Sunday mornings with an hour lost in the night is not easy, so well done, you made it. Um, I wanted to show you that video um, at the start of my talk because I just wanted to say that when we're talking about mums today, it's not just about our biological mothers, the ones who gave birth to us, it's about all those people that we saw on the video. It's about foster mums, it's about adoptive mums, it's about grandparents who look after their grandkids, it's about so much more aunties, Sunday school teachers, it's about all of us who play our role in bringing up children. Like Helena said, it takes a village to raise a child and that is so true. I also wanted to show you that video because there's so many mums in the Bible or mother figures in the Bible, I didn't really know who to choose. <laughs> I wondered if any of you can think of any other mothers in the Bible that weren't on that video. Can anyone think of any other mums in the Bible that they didn't show? Joseph? Mary, yep. Daisy, is that what you were thinking as well? Yeah. Daisy over there? Eve, yeah, the first mother in the Bible. Eve, very good. Any more? Elizabeth, very good, yeah, who was John the Baptist's mum. I'm sure there's loads more. Those are the ones I had down, actually. Oh, Rebecca, who was Jacob and Esau's mum. Lots and lots and lots. So because it was so hard to choose who to talk about today, I thought, why don't I talk about the person that I'm named after? And that is Hannah. That seemed like a simple one. So I'm going to talk about Hannah and Samuel today. Oh, I just gave you the answer to a question I was going to ask you. <laughs> Who was Hannah's son? It was Samuel. I don't need to ask you that now. Um, so the story of Hannah and Samuel is in 1 Samuel, funnily enough, verses, um, chapters 1 and 2. And I'm going to just tell you a little bit about Hannah to start with. Hannah was married to a man called Elkanah. That's a funny name, isn't it? Now, Elkanah loved Hannah very much, and she loved him very much. But she couldn't have children for a long, long time. And she was really, really sad about this. You can see that on the picture, can't you? Every year they'd go up to this place called Shiloh where they went to worship God and to offer sacrifices to him and there was a priest there called Eli. Hannah kept on praying for years and years for a child until one year she got so de desperate she said to God, God, if you will give me a child, I will give that child back to you. Now God heard her prayers and he gave her a son called Samuel and she named him Samuel because Samuel means because I asked the Lord for him. I think that's really cool when you have a name that means something that special, isn't it? Now, before we think a bit more about Hannah and Samuel, what I want us to do is think about what some of our mums or the people looking after us get us to do that maybe we don't like very much. I bet your mums or the people who look after you tell you to do things that are good for you, but that you really don't like doing. I know Zara could name a few. So, can anyone think of anything 
that their parents might ask them to do that is supposed to be good for them, but they really don't like. Chris, have you got another microphone? You could run around and, and uh, see what people say. Tidy your room. Oh, yeah, tidy your room. Do you know, that's a good one. I didn't have that on my list, actually. That is a good one. Make me wash my face after having peanut butter for breakfast. Oh, yeah. Now, Joseph, Joseph, come up here, because I've got a bag full of things here, and in my bag are some things that represent some of these things. See if you can find... I thought of, like, get, having a bath or a shower. That's one of the things we don't like. Is there something in there that's about having a bath or a shower? Yes, brilliant. Pop that on the table. Right, what else can we think of that our mums... Thanks, Joseph. That our mums might ask us to do that is supposed to be good for us but that we maybe don't really like doing. Eat healthily and drink more water. Oh, you've got two of mine, Tyler. Do you want to come up and look in my bag or should I do it for you? <laughs> yeah, so eating our vegetables and drinking lots of water, that's definitely a good one. I think there might be two things in there for that. Um, Daisy had one, I think. Did you have one, Daisy? Daisy? Um, eat your vegetables. Yeah, you've got to eat your vegetables as well. There you eat go. Eat your greens, I even bought, better. I bought a leek because I didn't think many people would like leeks. <laughs> I've got a few more. Anyone can think of any more? Oh, Jill's got one at the back. Should we ask Jill? Eat leeks. Yeah, that's right. That's asked, right. Well. Have you done your homework yet? Brilliant. Have you done your homework yet? Yes. Or what I thought as well was do your homework as soon as you get it. That's why I tell you, Zara, isn't it? doesn't really work. <laughs> any more for any more? Bertie's got one. Um, brush my hair in the morning when I, just, when I want to and I just want to go and play outside Heck instead. Yeah. I sympathise. It takes me ages to brush my hair. I didn't think of that one, Bertie. That's a good one, brushing your hair. Any more? Maddie, have you got one? Oh, do you want to put it up there? Your teeth. Having to go to the toilet before you go on the long car trip. When you yeah. Go. Clean your teeth, going to the toilet before we go out. Right, I think I'll show you the last two things that are in my bag. Oh, I've got three things. Does anyone's parents try and get them to go out for walks? And they really don't like it. This is a big one between me and Zara. Zara gave up on walks a long time ago. So I bought her... These are actually her boots for CCF. So she does do some uh, active stuff, but just not going for walks. The other thing I thought that mums ask us to do, and this changes as they get older. When they're little, it's about getting them to bed on time, isn't it? When they get to teenagers, it's more about getting them out of bed in the morning <laughs> so they can get to school on time. Let's put that one there. And then I had one more thing that I think parents ask us to do, because it's good for us. Reading a book. Some kids love reading, don't they? Joseph loves reading. Anyone else love reading? Oh, lots of you. Again, Zara, not so much. <laughs> I'll put that on there. Sorry, Zara, I wasn't supposed to embarrass you this morning, was I? So, our mums often ask us to do things, don't they, that are good for us, but we might not like them. So, let's go back to Hannah and Samuel. I'm going to read you the next bit of the story from the message. It says, Before the year was out, Hannah had conceived and given birth to a son. She named him Samuel, explaining, I asked God for him. When Elkanah next took his family on their annual trip to Shiloh to worship God, offering sacrifices and keeping his vow, Hannah didn't go. She told her husband, after the child is weaned, I'll bring him myself and present him before God, and that's where he'll stay for good. Elkanah said to his wife, do what you think is best. What a good husband. <laughs> Stay home until you have weaned him. Yes, let God complete what he has begun. So she did. She stayed home and nursed her son until she had weaned him. That just means until he's ready to eat proper food and he's probably like one or two maybe. Then she took him up to Shiloh, bringing them also the makings of a generous sacrificial meal, a prize bull, flour and wine. The child was so young to be sent off. I just have this picture of Hannah walking to Shiloh carrying Samuel with pulling this bull behind her. Can you imagine it? The, they first butchered the bull, then they brought the child to Eli the priest. Hannah said, excuse me, sir, would you believe that I'm the very woman who is standing before you at this very spot praying to God? I prayed for this child and God gave me what I asked for. And now I have dedicated him to God. He's dedicated to God for life. Then and there they worshipped God. 
Isn't that amazing? So Hannah didn't give up praying for a child and God gave her what she asked for. But then she made this huge sacrifice and she gave the child Samuel back to God so that he could grow up with Eli and be a priest as well. Now I need four volunteers who are happy to just come and sit on the edge of the stage and hold something for me. Daisy, do you want to do that? Come on then. Um, Bertie, you come up. Daisy, another Daisy. And Mabel, do you want to come and sit on the edge of the stage? Oh, I've got four girls. Very nice. I'm going to give you bits as I, as I um, go along, so just sit there for a minute. So it must have been so hard for Hannah, mustn't it, to give up Samuel, but she did it because she made a promise to God, but also she was doing what she thought was best for her child and because she loved him so much. So our mums do the best for us, don't they? And they want the best for us. Oh, now I've lost my place. <laughs> Mums love us so much that they want us to be healthy, they want us to grow up to do really well, and they want us to enjoy life. And that's why they ask us to do all these funny things, don't they? Not funny things, things that we don't like. I'm sure Hannah found it really hard only seeing Samuel once a year when she went up to Shiloh, but she knew that she was doing the best for him and that she was keeping her promise to God. The next thing I have is that being a mum is really not easy. (laughs) Can you hold that one, Daisy? Being a mum is not easy, is it? All those mums out there, I'm sure, are nodding. All the time our children are young, we give up so much for them, don't we? We give up sleep, we give up our time, we give up money for them, we give up food for them maybe sometimes, we maybe give up careers for them. I think we also give up all our emotions to them sometimes. We feel completely drained of everything because we try and give it all to our children. And then as they grow up, they become more independent. They become teenagers. They don't need us so much anymore. But we still worry about them, and we still want the best for them. And I know all of you here who have got grown-up kids, I'm sure you never stop wanting the best for them, and you never stop loving them, and you never stop worrying about them. So my next one is, you never stop being a (laughs) mum. You can hold that one, Bertie. Thanks. We have to let our children go, don't we? Like Hannah let Samuel go, maybe not as young as... Hannah let Samuel go, but we have to let them go. But we don't just let them go completely. We let them go trusting in God and knowing that he's going to look after them. Thanks, Mabel. And we can keep them in prayer and trust God for their future, knowing that he will look after them. I just wanted to give a little aside here, because I know the story of Hannah is a little bit hard. In this story, Hannah prayed for a child and God answered her but I also know that for so many people who are longing for a child it doesn't always happen and God it feels like God doesn't always answer your prayers so I think for those of you there are no easy answers but all I can say is God still loves you and he's still with you and it's not your fault it's not anything that you've done that means that God is not giving you that child this story not only made me think about doing the best for our children and wanting the best for them but also about all those mothers in the world today who are having to make sacrifices for their own children. There's so many, aren't there? We think of mothers here in the UK who are maybe having to choose between um, feeding their children or heating their home at the moment as the cost of living goes up, maybe giving up their own food so their own children can eat. And of course, we think of mothers in the Ukraine who are having to make incredibly hard decisions about what to do for their, the best for their children, leaving their country and their family or leaving their children with other people even so that they are safe. When I see mothers and young children in those boats crossing the channel, I just think how desperate they must be to even make that journey with their young children to try and give them a better life. So what have Hannah and Samuel shown us today? Do you girls want to read out what you've got on your cards and remind people what Hannah and Samuel have shown us? Our mums do their best for us and want the best for us. Brilliant. Daisy? Mums make sacrifices for their children. It's not always easy. Brilliant. You never stop being a mum. Very true. We can trust God with our children. Brilliant. Thank you so much, girls. Do you want to go and sit down? Thank you for holding those up for me. That is amazing. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I'm just going to say a prayer as we finish, so let's just pray together. 
God of Hannah, for whom loving her son Samuel meant saying goodbye and caring from a distance. We lift to you this Mother's Day all those whose children are not living with them right now. We lift to you all those who long for a child. We lift to you all those living through war and hardship and trying to do their best. Where there is grieving, will you bring comfort? Where there is pain, will you bring restoration? Where there is unknowing, will you bring peace? Where there is loneliness, will you bring love and community? Where there is hope, will you bring more? Our God who longs for us, fights for us, loves us like a mother, who walks with us, cares for us and guides us like a mother. We praise you this Mother's Day for who you are and we thank you for all the mother figures in our lives who reflect to us your heart. Amen. <laughs>